We are looking on the foreign policy of Napoleon. When Napoleon came to power in 1799, he wanted to regain the La Glory, the glory that France was associated with. So in 1800, we see him fighting against Austria. He fought against Austria. Why? It is because Austria was not pleased by a defeat during the Italian campaign. In this war, Austria was defeated. He moved on in 1802, he had to sign a treaty with Britain, the so-called the Treaty of Amiens. He wanted to give much of his time in his domestic policy, so that is why he had to sign this agreement with Britain. He wanted to consolidate his power in the country. He wanted to gain a lot of support from the people in the country. So he had to stop his foreign adventures and he had to sign the Treaty of Amiens with Britain in 1802. Napoleon renewed his wars in 1804. He fought against Austria and also Russia and Prussia. When he fought against these countries, Prussia, Austria, they were defeated and Napoleon remained the, do the dominant force uh, in Europe. He later on fought against Britain in 1805 at the Battle of Trafalgar, and this battle, Napoleon was unsuccessful. In 1807, Napoleon fought against Russia. Russia was defeated. She was forced to sign the Treaty of Tilsit. And in that same year, Napoleon started what was known as the Continental System. In this Continental System, all those countries that were under his domain were not supposed to continue trading with Britain. This continental system, it brought economical strain to a number of European powers. And this led Portugal to declare that she was not going to continue following Napoleon's continental system. It explains why later on the Peninsula War yet okay. On the Peninsula War, Napoleon wanted to attack Portugal because Portugal had refused to follow his continental system. But for him to reach Portugal, he was supposed to pass through Spain. So when he was in Spain, he found that the Spaniards were revolting against their leader. Their leader was known as Ferdinand VII. He was now too old, he had a nickname, he was known as the Old Spider. So when he reached Spain, the Spaniards demanded assistance from Napoleon to remove Ferdinand VII. Napoleon had to remove Ferdinand VII, and instead of making his son Charles IV succeed him, Napoleon had to impose his brother to become the new leader of Spain. This led the Spaniards to fight against Napoleon, and later on the Spaniards were assisted by Britain, and Napoleon was defeated in Spain. And that is why it is called the Spanish Arsa led to the downfall of Napoleon. Because after this defeat, those countries that Napoleon had defeated earlier on renewed their wars against Napoleon. In 1809, Austria renewed a war against France. This was because Austria was encouraged by the defeat of Napoleon in Spain. Napoleon was defeated by Spain, a small country in Europe, and this led Austria to gather courage. She thought that she was going to be in a position to defeat Napoleon. She fought against Napoleon at the Battle of uh, Aspen, and, and on this battle, France was defeated. However, when France was defeated, she went back and regrouped. And when she regrouped, France declared war against Austria at the Battle of Wagram. At this battle of Wagram, Austria was defeated. When Austria was defeated, she was forced to accept the constitution that was imposed to her by France. And Napoleon went on to marry the queen, Marie Louise, uh, from Austria, and it led Napoleon to continue dominating Austria. Around 1810, certain developments were taking place in Europe. In Prussia, we see that industrialization started to take place. During this particular period of time, it also led to the rise of Hardenberg and Stein. These were two army commanders who were determined to revive the fortunes of the army in the country. 
They started to spread nationalistic feelings. This led Prussia to reconsider fighting against France so that they were going to be independent from the domain of France. The developments that were taking place in Prussia later on led to the downfall of Napoleon. We move on and look on what took place in 1812. In 1812, the Moscow campaign took place. Russia had to declare to France that she was not going to continue following Napoleon's continental system. This was because the continental system was bringing economical problems to her. Price of goods had skyrocketed economically, the economy was deteriorating, and she had to declare that she was not going to follow Napoleon's continental system. This led Napoleon to declare war against Russia on the Moscow campaign. France deployed troops, and when they deployed these troops, they had to attack Russia. They reached Moscow. Moscow was the capital city of Russia. When the French troops arrived in Moscow, they found that Moscow was deserted. There was no one in Moscow. The French troops continued pursuing or following the Russian troops, but they could not see these Russian troops. The French troops never anticipated that this war was going to take a long period of time. They started to face serious problems of food. They did not carry enough food, and also they were now affected by weather. Winter was fast approaching. So many soldiers died as a result of winter. Some of the roads that they were using were used as traps by the Russians, and so many people, so many soldiers, died as a result of bridges that collapsed as they were pursuing the Russian troops. By the time they reached these Russian troops, Napoleon no longer had the same number of soldiers that he came with when he came to attack Russia. The Russians used two new military methods of fighting, the scorched earth policy and the guerrilla welfare. They attacked France using these methods. Napoleon was not familiar with these methods, and so many French soldiers died as a result of these new methods that the Russians applied. Napoleon was further crippled by the fact that so many of his soldiers deserted. The issue of desertion affected him, and it led France to be defeated by Russia. Prussia and Austria, realizing that France was being defeated by Russia, they joined, forming the Third Coalition. Russia, Prussia, and Austria. They further attacked Napoleon, and it is said that Napoleon, during this time, yet to recruit young soldiers, as young as 15 and 18 years, so that they could continue fighting against these countries or against the members of the Third Coalition. Napoleon faced severe losses. Britain later on yet to join, forming the Fourth Coalition. The coming of Britain, it led France to be defeated. Napoleon had to flee the country, and when he fled the country, the Allied powers they met so that they could celeb celebrate their victory against Napoleon. However, after 100 days, Napoleon renewed his war against the members of the Fourth Coalition or the Allied powers. He was defeated, and his defeat led the Allied powers to meet in Austria, the capital city of Austria, Vienna, and they formulated what was known as the Vienna Settlement. In our next lesson, we are going to talk about the Vienna Settlement.